play. See, that's where they kiss for the first time on the dance floor. And if there's no music, they can't dance. If they can't dance, they can't kiss. If they can't kiss, they can't fall in love. And I'm history. What? What are you doing? I figure voting for Salvino or Heller is just as silly as them running for office, which is just as silly as me running for office. Nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. In the morning, or bent over like this, I'd probably feel 100% Moon River. Did mommy bake you a sauerkraut sandwich for lunch? Uh, hey, where's the flood mueller? It's Mueller. What's going on, officer? We're looking for an escaped convict. <laughs> Get it out of me! Well, Brian, this is a very nutritious lunch. All the food groups are represented. Did your mom marry Mr. Rogers? My God, you must really love this picture. Me? You've been here all day, and I've seen you here twice before. I gotta speak to you. Oh, oh my God! Oh. Oh. All right, let's start the recording. All right, go ahead, Lisa. Okay. Uh, welcome once again to Yeah, Uh Huh with Lisa, Phil, and Aaron. <laughs> this week we're doing the movies of 1985 with a panel of our favorites. We have. <laughs> We have with us this week Bill, Jeremy, Tim, and Chansey. Alexa, purchase pornography. <laughs> <laughs> no, Phil, I told you you did enough of that already. Uh, but yeah, but my command is more specific than just pornography. I don't want to get yeah. into that right now. <laughs> yeah. Clockwise rim jobs versus counterclockwise rim jobs? Like Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> Something like that. But okay, so yeah, that's Philip's favorite, Mark Wahlberg shirtless. Exactly. <laughs> on Alexa. <laughs> right in my basement bin. Yeah. Um, Lisa and Phil, why uh 1985? What well, I'm kind of out of the Because we already did 84. We've done 83 and 84. Are you, are you doing right. all, the whole 80s? Or are you gonna do every year of we the We started 80s? at 83. I think we're just gonna keep going. What well, why the start go. at 83? We should have started at 84. Okay. These are all really because good. That years. was a great. That was a great year for movies. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. We Instead really chose '83, which was a kind of shitty year for movies. Um, <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, Scar we Scarface won '83. Mm -hmm. What one '84? Yeah. I'd have to look again. Freddie, Freddie won '84 somehow. Yeah, uh, Freddie. Freddie. So just, so just going back forty years to just to the to the. Glory yeah. of the eighties. It was just, just a, a random day. I was random like, let's do thing. a movie. Let's do a movie right podcast. And I was like, well, what what we could you do a genre? We could do mm -hmm. a year. We could do uh mus music oriented, biopic yeah. or whatever. We, we did said, one that was uh mustache movies. Yeah. Oh, I like that. We also did vampires. Villains, not vampires. Villains. Or Who won mustache? Yeah, well, villains. Um, this is well, terrible. we did vampires on Amanda's podcast. There's so many, the so long list. between the episodes, I can't remember. Was it Tombstone? <laughs> I believe Tombstone, Tombstone, whole cast won. Tombstone should have won. Yeah, I think it did. And uh, mm -hmm. I should have won, damn it. Most mustaches per capita, it had some <laughs> tremendous ones too. It yes. did. Definitely. spectacular but uh since we started at 83, okay, on 83, Casey Box from um. An evening at the movies suggested, well, if you'd done 84, my co-host Amanda would be here because that's her favorite year of all movies, you know. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, so Amanda did make it to that one. Mm -hmm. um, so we did 84 and it was really robust in terms of great movies. I mean, it was like, oh, my God, the top 15 were really, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be, it looked like uh, the SEC yeah. of the NCAA. You know, it was like mm -hmm. Alabama, Oklahoma. LSU, you know, all the best was in 84. And so, okay, well, we'll do 85. We'll just keep it going. And one thing is we do them very, like, I think it's going to be like four times a year. 
because Philip likes, or I mean, um, Aaron specifically, but Philip too, they like plenty of time to actually watch a significant yeah. portion of the movie. I watched, so I watched 40 watch. movies for this thing. Nice. Wow. I thought I was done. And then some of the nominees made me go watch more. <laughs> That's awesome. And he would have watched more, but some of them aren't available free. Right. Yeah, right. He never watched them when they were uh, current. Yeah. I got and a lot the, of them at the, the library. That's another right. thing about the 80s. I did ones because I. DVD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Canopy uh, and DVD. In yeah, 1985, yeah. I was still in high school. My dad didn't want me to have a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my main sources of entertainment was going to the movies at the Dollar Cinema near uh near where i live so i have actually seen a significant portion of the movies already whereas aaron and philip might not yeah. have because they Bill, had bill seen 100 percent something of the you might movies. refer to as a social life there was actually only one on the list that i had not seen before yeah which one that was come and see i uh. knew it was going to be come and see <laughs> yeah. Chancy. Yeah. I think C School and Ebert missed that one. I think I don't know. I did. Did they? Yeah, that's one of our oh, resources. We do look at Siskel and Ebert. We look at the right. reviews for the movies, um, and then you know Philip will watch quite a few. So Aaron watches more, I think, and mm-hmm. um, I will kind of join Philip on the movies that I'm open to seeing that I think I might enjoy. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm working again, I probably won't watch 40 next time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. The benefits well. unemployment. Mm-hmm. Well, that's yeah. what it was. All right. So we got a monumental task ahead of us to rewrite history mm-hmm. um, and award one of these films that was not necessarily, but likely um, looked over by the Academy back in 1985. Aaron. Do you want to run down the rules like real fast? Like, uh... sure. Um, I gathered a list of what I assume, or not assume, but what I could find to be all of the movies released in the U.S. in 1985, plus selected foreign representations as I found them or people suggested them. Um, grab grab them off Wikipedia for the most part, and these are all pasted into a Google sheet. <clears throat> the contestants are on a different tab and we each nominate one title on the list. And then we have, uh, we have 14 people that did nominations, but it looks like we have seven people participating in the, uh, in the voting today. Um, where's, Casey, so, where, where's Casey and Freddie? I know I don't why know. Amanda's not, I know why Amanda's not here, but we're now Casey and Freddie. Yeah, Probably yeah. on safe driving mode with Chansey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to get this thing off of safe driving mode, to be honest. Well, Casey's off in the great northwest. Who yeah. knows? He might be up. They're in a, a, they're in a rest up. stop in safe driving mode. And I, Amanda's in New York. but um, Maybe it'll pop in. Who knows? Yeah, they, they have excuses. They have legit. Stuff. Where's Nick? He, <laughs> Nick took a second job. Hmm. Nick said he probably had to work. So. <clears throat> gotcha. Um, so we ranked them. This I ranked all fourteen. So we're, um, the number one gets the number one movie gets fourteen points. My number two gets thirteen points. My number three gets twelve points. Down to uh, my number fourteen gets one point. Um, and we all do that and add them, add the points together, and the result is on the results tab, and that will be the winner of the Felix. I feel like Aaron should be wearing a suit with holding a statue, though. <laughs> uh, that's Felix's job. That would be. So yeah, the we winner the winner gets the Felix as opposed to the Oscar, an odd couple. Okay, could well, be, could be a okay. a pan, right? He's got the yeah. pan there. <laughs> Was it a pan? <laughs> I see the yeah. I see the picture right now. I'm looking at the doc, and you got the picture there. Oh, nice, yeah. Getting handed a pan as he uh, gets leaves his wife kicked yeah. out. Yeah, so that's that's uh, I've I've entered mine, Phil's, and Lisa's picks, and that's where we're at so far. <laughs> All right. But, so but, as we go around, everybody will be. Uh, 
Yeah, the contestants okay. tab in the middle is probably where we want to watch for now. We'll go in turn across these 14 movies. And when it comes to your turn, you'll have an opportunity. You'll be introduced with, uh, in conjunction with your website or any projects you're working on. And you'll also give us a brief rundown, rundown of your selection. And then we'll go through it that way. Those that aren't here, we'll just kind of do a uh, um, uh, off-the-cuff discussion. You know, I don't know if we time it anymore. We did time it two minutes per turn. but Well, it's seven people versus the usual 15, so... Yeah, <laughs> right. It's probably not, you know. Uh, Lisa well, will tell you if you're getting long. If you're getting long winded, she'll let you know. <laughs> no one's I was gonna that. say Jeremy's just trying to jockey for more time to so he can try and talk his uh, way. Chancey, right. he knows. Yeah. Uh, let me get the timer going. Three, six, nine, twelve, twenty-four, thirty. Okay, each of us get three minutes if you need it. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, for each of the other movies where the person didn't come to represent, uh, they only get, we do like a one minute, this is what the movie's about. I can't tell you why she likes it. And the, and the idea is you're campaigning for your movie to be yeah. to win. The idea oh, is gosh. You're trying to convince us why, you know, in my case, right Ron yep. should win this. Uh, right. Event. But Aaron, you're first in the list. Why don't you go ahead and uh, kick it off with your movie? Okay. <clears throat> I went into this probably predisposed to dislike it. And I remember I didn't rate the previous year's Woody Allen movie very highly, but uh, my pick is The Purple Rose of Cairo. Um, it had Mia Farrow and uh, Jeff Daniels. And it was just, it's movie magic. He walks off the screen right into uh, right into her depression life. And it's just, it's fun. It's a, it's a, might be might be one of Woody's best movies in my opinion, and I don't know. It was, it was my favorite on the list. That's keeping it short and sweet. I don't think I'm going to use the three minutes. Yeah, well, I thought it, so. We have room here for some rebuttal. Or yeah. uh, now, actually, I agree with Aaron. I thought the acting was very good in it, man. I like Jeff Daniels. I like. I, I thought. I mean, it was. It Jeff was a Daniels good movie. Was great in that. Uh, yeah, it super, was definitely one of Woody Allen's better pictures. Super emotional. It, it didn't you know? have a, a super yeah. Hollywood emotional ending. Movie. In fact, mm -hmm. it had the reverse of a Hollywood ending. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was well, kind of. She lost other both than, guys. Other than literally, he went back to Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, in the end. Yeah, but the, Holly, but the girl was supposed to get the happy I ending. I know. I'm teasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was it was a good movie though. I didn't I didn't know what to expect of it. I didn't know what the hell it was. I I heard the name before, but I never knew what the hell the movie was. And yeah, I didn't know what it was going to be about at and all. And then I saw it directed by Woody Allen. I was like, oh fucking Christ, help me now. But uh, <laughs> exactly. And then, I mean, I, I I think I think I watched a, another Woody Allen movie in the last couple months. I forget which one it was, but it was just garbage. But this one was actually, I mean, Jeff Daniels. I, I saw him. I saw his name pop up. I'm like, is this Dumb and Dumber Woody Allen style? And I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm actually I'm actually amazed by how good the acting is in this. I'm amazed by everything about this movie. And I wanted her husband to get knocked the fuck out. But besides that, I mean. Right. Danny Ayello in it. He was really good. Very one dimensional character, but he was really. But he did it very he was, well. He was good in it. Yeah. 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 So yeah he the wanted to knock him out. He did Excellent. his job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Jeff Daniels in two roles. Uh, Mia Farrow as someone who was someone indecisive and abused wife who's ready to leave but doesn't know how right you tim know? you're about to say it's emotional you said mm -hmm. oh yeah i mean i i definitely think like that i mean that movie seems like it's woody kind of like uh he's talking about the movies he liked when he was a kid and kind of his i guess like cynicism about that right yeah it's kind of what it feels like it's a it's a yeah, it's a very emotional it's movie about like the John Ford era kind of. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thirty for the movies that he grew up on, old, old Hollywood movies, yeah, the really old movies. Yeah, I like that movie quite a bit. I I, I, not, I like the set. Could not I like the way it. the setting was and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah, real time and place. Sex. I'm like, no, they didn't have sex. <laughs> yeah. No, well, at least it wasn't over the way sex can be now. Mm, if you want them this... to have had sex, imagine they had sex. Well, well no, yeah, you fade off the screen. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, did they did they pan to the window or did they pan to the candle? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or the ocean. 
Right. No, the train going through the uh, tunnel. Right. Oh, yeah, the one. train. Hitchcock. The, the rock oh. blasting off. <laughs> Chanty, they can't pan to the window. Then they would have to see Woody Allen standing there looking all creepy looking in the window. <laughs> <laughs> we move on, and the next person on the list here Is would what? be Bill, Bill with Reanimator. Oh, yeah. Reanimator. Defend, little defend that turd. Combs. I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Combs, Bruce Abbott, Barbara Crampton. You know, it kind of left the slasher kind of thing that was going on. It was horror comedy. Uh, the effects for the 80s was good. It made you laugh. It had some good scenes to it. Um, you know, what they steal from an H.P. Lovecraft story. So it was kind of like they the did. Frankenstein remake. Only no electricity to bring him. You just have to start shooting people in the neck with the magic juice. Uh, <laughs> it, it was one of those movies I was torn. I, I re- it was between that and I really liked Return of the Living Dead, so I flipped the coin and that one won out. Uh, but I picked Return of the Living Dead was Return of the Living Dead <laughs> this year good. too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there were, okay. There were two. But, uh, uh, there were two Living Dead movies aside from Reanimator. Oh, there was yeah. more. There was a couple more Reanimator ones too. Oh, I, wow. I mean, in 1985. In 85, but uh. Yeah, so so uh, that on was the my titles thing. tab. I uh, I went with the kind of horror comedy thing off the thing. There was and that was one of my favorite ones from back then. I just I just always I it's one I can watch again and again and still like watching it. Mm-hmm. Like a midnight movie kind of. A, yes, a, you know, like Joe Bob. You know, yeah. get the Joe Bob driving going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but that's your favorite movie of the year. Um. Out of that category, I mean, that's just, that's just what you wanted to represent. I can do. I did want to represent. You know, after looking at some of the people, you see what some of the people throw out there, and you're like, yeah, you want to try to want to stay away from having like too many in one category. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and too many so I, for me. I mean, like I told you guys before, I could have easily thrown up Young Sherlock Holmes. I think it's an underrated yeah. movie. I think it's a mm-hmm. great movie. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, but I just went off. I, I went with the horror, the horror comedy. Well, we'll yeah. we have a See, and, and that's where we, I think that we the, also we also uh, have Oscars, a uh, a best uh, comedy and a best horror movie. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a discussion on the best things that didn't make our lists too, mm-hmm. right? Or, or um, not didn't make did that didn't get nominated. The honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's it for me and Reanimator. Okay. Yeah. All right. Philip, <laughs> gird your loins. He's got notes. Well, I'm not and going. I mean, he's got no. I just don't want to be at a loss for words. Ah, but okay. this this movie does leave you at a loss for words because mm-hmm. it's a beautiful movie on by Kira Kurosawa. It's kind of pretentious, I guess, to bring it up, but I did happen to see it in 1985. Whoa! Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw it. In, we saw at the we theater. saw it together. Big Aaron big screen. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, we saw whatever size our, screen was it like? Adult circle. I, Where, where'd we see that? It's like oh, downtown. we probably saw that That's down at the. Oh, downtown. We saw that at the repertory center. Oh, the, the re- oh, the repertory. Yeah, okay. yeah. We weren't on a date. We just were high, <laughs> and we wanted to go see a movie. And it's, <laughs> we went and saw the movie. And it was like the most. It was the most beautiful movie I had ever seen to date. I mean, aside from The Godfather, as, as far as the color of the film, yeah, the cinema, you know, the movement, the blood. The red blood, blood. Yeah. the blood, exactly. The lush grass, you know, the, wide the, shots. the way they recreated the feudal uh, uh, the edifices, you know. Um, the story is based on King Lear, where yeah. you had the uh, the main the, the king, I guess, um, mm-hmm. who is dividing his kingdom up amongst his three sons. And, you know, it's three hours of intrigue uh, with a couple of ladies mixed in there that, uh, that change the direction of uh, the outcome. But it really culminates in a final battle that's really beautiful in the way that Kurosawa does it. He, he does it to an orchestral piece that's just mesmerizing, you know, when uh, with the action sequences and everything. And then at one point, there's a uh, there's a gunshot. And at that point, it like it takes you out of the. The, the dreaminess of it or the fantasy of it and delivers you back into reality where it's a lot more uh, grotesque Bloody. and uh, just like a really great device. And so this movie inspired a lot, not this movie necessarily, but uh, Kurosawa inspired a lot of great American films like um, The Seven Samurai, 
um, the dirt, um, the dirty, uh, oh, the, the spaghetti the, westerns. Yeah, um, I think oh, Sergio Leone comes off of it. Right. Star Wars. Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. That Hidden too, Fortress, yeah. right? Uh, excuse me. All three Star Wars were before this movie. Yeah, dude, but Kurosawa also made fucking films before 1985. Oh, wait a minute. Did, right, did, right. We're did talking he, about. Did he, did he do the Hidden Samurai? Fort- did he do he did Hidden, did Hidden. I think Hidden he did Hidden Fortress. Fortress. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Real, real old yeah. guy. He's been making movies yeah. since yeah, the he, 40s, yeah, I think. He, if he did Hidden Fortress, then yeah, that's where Star Wars came from. So, mm-hmm. right. And it may even predate Hidden Fortress. Maybe he got the storyline for Hidden Fortress from someone even earlier. There's a lot of early Japanese films and um, like, for instance, The Hunger Games. Yeah. I love the opening sequence of that, like the title thing with the guy on on a horse firing the arrow. Mm. Right, right. And uh, Kurosawa mentioned, you know, it, it really looks spectacular. But just out of camera shot with the Toyota plant, it was, it was like filming. <laughs> That's season. directing right there. Yeah, yeah. somebody mm-hmm. asked him uh, what made him film the the cavalry coming up over the hill the way he did, and he said, he said, why? How did? It, why did he stage that shot that way? And he said, because if I'd done what I originally wanted, you'd see the Toyota plant. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> that was a quote of his. So. But I thought if you, I read mean, it, that's a misquote. I didn't say it the same way yeah. he did, of course. But you know, if you, you read about it in the, the original director, Japanese, no, no, I did not. His father Bill. was not. A, Don't leave Eli for that. His his father Bill. was not like a traditional Japanese guy. He was he was in the military, but he was uh, more very modern. enlightened. You know, introduced Akira Kurosawa to uh, Western culture. We fell in love with Western culture. And um, that's why a lot of the Japanese people view his films as uh, somewhat uh, bastardized or westernized. But he's mm. it, you know, American film critics absolutely love Akira Kurosawa. And this is like his last masterpiece. So, mm. That's awesome. Well, Phil, I just wanted to uh, tell you that I, I loved your film. beautiful synopsis of the movie. But quite frankly, I wanted to go back to 1985 to Gold Circle Cinema, get your two dollars back that you pay for that movie and beat the shit out of the person that took it from you to watch. <laughs> yeah. it. Oh, man, it was it was it was Race Street, the movies. Yeah. And Gold Circle Cinema one, was a dollar. The one, I, I they used to send oh. that. They used to send oh, the calendar the days when I went. the movies coming up. And it, that was the best. I I was I miss that mailing list. I think I got them sent to me in California for a little while. So oh, yeah, it's like, yeah. a little sidebar, uh, Phil. If you're interested in Japanese culture, the new Godzilla movie is pretty fantastic. Yeah, my son's seen one? it twice. <laughs> I, my son I saw it on I'm the opening day, and then he went to a matinee about two days later. Yeah. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. but he's a, he's a Godzilla file. I yeah. I kind of am too, but this one had a little bit more like. Japanese stuff, yeah, in it, I guess. Exactly. I don't know how to describe it. I want to see that one, but uh, we did go to the movies yesterday and uh, we we went with my first heart, the Marvels. Yeah, we did because you know, yeah. girl power. Sure. I caught up girl on power. my uh, baseball power. tonight. Plus, Podcast. there's the, the, the cat named Goose. I love that cat. Mm, the Octo cat. I don't know about the uh, Octo cat, it's a cat with tentacles. And okay. it, the tentacles pull things through its uh, mouth and into an alternate dimension. Oh my god, that it's sounds like love, Lovecraftian. It, it's it's <laughs> kind of cool, it's actually. It's why Nick Fury has one eye. Sounds better little, than Reanimator. <laughs> it makes me this much less afraid of Cthulhu. <laughs> Just this much. That much, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think it took about three minutes. Yeah. Uh huh. So okay. Yeah, Who's I guess. Next? Uh, Next one on the list that's present and accounted for is Jeremy with Clue. I suggest. Well, I mean, I didn't really need a reason to pick this movie besides the fact I knew it would piss Amanda and Casey off. But right. um, <laughs> they didn't even show up. Yeah, well, Amanda's on her birthday trip. Happy birthday to her! But and I really, I really wanted her to show up too. Just I knew I'd, I knew I'd get like a fucking yell at for stealing it again. But. <laughs> But yeah, I mean it's it's Clue. It's, they're not they're not here for me to shit yeah. on their picks. I mean, <laughs> oh, you can still shit on them. They'll hear it later. But <laughs> I mean, Will picked what Will picked first. What I want to fucking pick. So fuck Will. But that's a hundred percent. But I mean, Clue itself is just it's, an. Am- I think yeah. Will picked what going into this was the hands-on 
favorite if, you, if there were odds and bookies. Yeah. yeah. We do need to yeah. go over the people uh, didn't show up for. But yeah, we'll, we'll do that after we've all. We'll do that in rapid fire. We've after spoken. we've all had our speaks. Yep. And we can well, just I mean, take a turn talking about somebody else's movie. All right. Go ahead, Jeremy. Sorry about that. It's all good. But uh, Clue, I mean, how could you not pick it? It's fucking Tim Curry, Martin Mould, Madeline Kahn, freaking Christopher Boyd. Like, it's just a star-studded cast. And some people I never even heard of, but apparently we're big in the 80s. So, I mean, it's just, it's a huge cast. And it, Tim Curry alone, you could pick that movie for Tim Curry alone. Just the end yeah. scene with him. It's one of the best <laughs> scenes in cinema history. Him running back and forth, reacting the whole movie is something that I'll keep. I could watch that scene every day of my life and be entertained by it. It's just his masterness of his skill. I mean, he's such an amazing actor. Mainly, I picked it for him because it's, it's Tim fucking Curry. Even though it didn't win the Tim Curry bracket on bracket bastards because we're all assholes. What do you want? But uh, it just, I mean, that pissed off Amanda too, but that's why I did it. But I, I mean, haven't seen the episode. Who did win? Scary movie too. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. That's a shocker. <laughs> Over Rocky yeah. Horror? I mean, yeah, yeah, over Rocky Horror alone. Over Rocky Horror and uh, Clue? There, there were not yeah. there, there were there were non musical lovers on the show, so I mean yeah. Rocky Horror. Yeah. Okay. As far, okay. As far yeah. as far as the show though. But even I as mean, even as a guy next who time have musicals, me on if Rocky Horror's involved, have me on. Yeah. Even as even as a guy who hates musicals, I like fucking Rocky Horror. But also yeah. at the same time, I have to point out that you know, the fact that none of those even came close to winning, I shouldn't say came close, but the fact that none of the greats won just really just goes to show the, you know, the selection quality that's going on over there. I mean, I mean, C Clue was in the finals against Game Movie too, so. It, Ooh, it made the, Clue. It made, Clue it was in the, the finals. Final. Dude, Rocky Horror Picture Show is infinitely better than Clue. Clue Maybe. can fucking... I'm going Lucas. for Rocky. Now, now, yeah. Chancy. <laughs> no, yeah. Let him go. We get, we get our. I'm sorry. We, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we, we get go our ahead. minute to rebut, and I got a little rebuttal too. I'm sorry, Philip's right. Go for it, Chancy. <laughs> You're all well, you We got to, we got to let Jeremy finish his. Yeah, we got. Ah. Yeah, I didn't even let him finish his time. That's my bad. Your habit, dude. Your habit. But uh, yeah, I mean, fucking, it's close. He's got a I minute just... remaining of his three. I don't even need that because it's fucking clue. It speaks for itself. I, I don't need to speak. I don't need to speak for it. It's freaking clue. <laughs> right. And it inspired so a board done. game. It inspired a fucking board game. That's all I gotta say. No, it didn't mm -hmm. inspire a board game. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> the board game came first. I played that board game when I was like eight. Dude. <laughs> Your grandparents I, played I, that board game, man. I guarantee it up, up, up increased sales of that board game a lot. Maybe, Probably yeah. for sure. Okay. It may but have it didn't inspire sure. it. No, <laughs> I, uh, one, I think one I, reason it increased sales is because they released a movie version of it. Uh, I believe yeah, they, they did. Anyway. They probably changed the cards to look like the movie characters or something. I mean, it's it's definitely like, like a, Barbie, a, special edition. a Barbie situation, right? With Clue, like yeah. one of the first on a smaller scale toy tie-in like, kind of thing. It was a kind of a big deal because, and I don't yeah. think Jeremy even mentioned this. It had multiple endings. Right. Yeah, well, that's true. That's yeah. the real big deal. Yeah, at first you didn't. That. At first it was random. You wouldn't know what ending you'd get, and then uh, I think you'd pick your ending. Mm. In the multiplex. Interesting. After after like two or three weeks of it. Yeah, it reminded me of something that actually belonged in dinner theater. Like you got the King Arthur's Round Table, and they performed yeah. it live. Yeah. That would be something. cool live. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I that, would be, like, that would be that would be interesting live. Yeah, yeah. that would be interesting. Yeah. I felt like it, the cast was amazing. I just wish it was a better written thing. Mm. <laughs> I wish they had. I, I wish they gave this cast more to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I did like. I did like Tim Curry with the poop on his shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Philip's That's, greatest fear. Ongoing poop bit. on the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> That's because it's been a nightmare. For so long. He does seem to manage to step in a lot of poo. Yeah. Some of it's more than average, I believe. And that's not my fault. Congratulations, man. <laughs> you know, there's a little, uh, not to get too, let's I, move on. I heard you're in, yeah, 90th percentile of poo <laughs> steppers. I, I, I can respect that. I believe he might be. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> At least based on, it could do you smell poop? All right, next person that is present. Uh, um, any anybody else want to chancy? Now's your opportunity to shit on Clue. 
Oh, I, I got it out of my system right at the gate. Like, <laughs> oh, the fact dude, that... We cut you fa- off. <laughs> oh, it, it, oh I know. I, up. I was, exactly. too. I, 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 was, uh, I was definitely, like, ready to go. And I'm, I'm glad you guys cut me off because I would have just went on a whole ass tirade. Well, you know what? You're not cut off because it's your turn. Let's tell oh, everybody for... about your, your pick. Okay, the so... Most difficult watch of all the whole thing that doesn't and, make it the worst movie it just means it's the most difficult watch it's a hard it's a hard watch like yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say the previous year this went to uh the killing fields probably right the the hardest watch award right <laughs> yeah so my choice for this for for this uh year's film was come and see and it actually wasn't even a film that i had heard about until within the last year or so, I kept mm-hmm. seeing it come up on like these lists of most disturbing films you've probably never seen, kind of thing. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, all right, you know, because I'm kind of a I'm a guy that likes to watch you know really fucked up shit like scary movies and like you know if you say it's too fucked up, I'm there to watch it. So I was like, oh, I'm finding this movie and I'm gonna watch it. And even though it was made during the Cold War in Russia, like, even though you had to do the subtitles, which is usually a turnoff for most people, like, it, it still, like, it still touched me. And if, like, you know, it was like, wow, there's like, like, in a way, I would argue it to be one of the, like, most perfect films made. In the in like a list, like on the list to be on the list, I should say, not number one necessarily, but on the list for sure. Like you know, the 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 cinematography, the storytelling, uh, the visuals, the fact that they used live fucking ammunition while they were shooting at that kid hiding behind that cow. By the way, if anybody didn't notice that, that's a fun little fact for you. The fact that it was made during the Cold War in the Soviet Union in and of itself is a fucking miracle that it lasted as long as it did, that it made it through the sensory boards, all that stuff. And then when I found out that it was up for grabs to be able to be on this list, I knew I had to pick it because I had to like, I don't, I didn't want to say I had to make you guys watch this film, but like, I just, it's one of those films where it's like, you have to see this film. Like if you're a film enthusiast, and you like film for other than sitting around for X amount of time so you don't have to think about your life kind of scenario. Like, it's one of those movies that you must watch because of insert reason here, whether it's cinematography, storytelling, directorial stuff, like, all of it. It's literally just like a circular tale about how war never ends and how easy it is to lose your own humanity. And the fucking... The fact that, like, you know, there's always cause and effect to, like, basically every action in the film. It's it's just, plus the disillusionment of war. Like, it's basically, next to All Quiet on the Western Front, in my opinion, it's the greatest anti-war film ever made between that one and All Quiet on the Western Front. Just hands down. I don't know how much of my three minutes I got left, but that's pretty much all I got. Yeah, I wasn't gonna stop you because we cut you off early. Yeah. <laughs> oh my bad. You're very you're well right said. at it. Very you're well right said. at it. Yeah. I, I, I got yeah, thank you. No, no. I mean, it needed that. It was my number one, actually. I, was, I put it I off. Gonna, to... I was just gonna point out it was a great anti-war film, and you'd already said that verbatim. Yeah. Ver- verbatim, not verbatim. Well, one of the verbatim. things. <laughs> one of the things I loved about it. And you don't want to use the word love about this movie, but it's like the soundtrack. It sounds like tinnitus. It sounds like the the, the <laughs> constant sound that would be going on in your mind if oh, your you, brain was rattled by by shells going off and gunfire. That's what the composer wants to hear. Well, yeah, that was like the director the wanted that. The director yeah. wanted that because yeah, you're supposed to experience the movie through the the uh, experience of the young boy. Right. So, like, after, after the artillery strike, when he's got all that, when he's got the, ten, well, I think it's, like, tinnitus, tinnitus, whatever it's called, like, mm-hmm. that, you're, you're supposed to experience that along with him moving forward. And then that scene, when they're running out of the village trying to get to the bog, 
And then that nurse or whatever she was looks back and sees everybody just stacked up. Right. Right after they'd eaten his mother's uh, stew. Rotten rotten stew. stew. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, uh, that was definitely like a remarkable point in that film. But I don't think. Yeah. It, go ahead. Always movies for, you know, shits and giggles or popcorn and stuff. I mean, this is like, <laughs> I agree with Chancey that this, you do almost have to make yourself watch it, but it's like, it's uh boiler alert. Phil ranked this number one. Yeah, I did. Uh, that's, and I'm super stoked about it, dude. Honestly, I, like I'm glad somebody, you know, somebody else other than myself did. Of course that is. <laughs> well, I'll have to admit. Have to when... mm -hmm. Sorry, um, go ahead, Bill. Okay. When I, I, like I said, had heard of it and I was, you know, being a history teacher, war buff. And I was like, Saw the trailer. I'm like, all right. And so I'm getting, I'm, I'm starting, you know, I'm watching it. I'm watching it and I'm watching it. And I'm like, okay. I mean, you know, there is, if you want to say disturbing scenes, but I've seen a lot worse in different movies. I mean, Schindler's List can be thrown up there right with it. But I'll be honest, after about 65 minutes into it, I was praying for the damn Germans to come and burn the whole goddamn village down. I was, I was like, holy <laughs> God, let something happen. Yeah, I was a I, I was I was on the opposite of the thing. I'm like, please just just have something going on. I wanted it was like Jurassic Park where you wanted the Velociraptors to eat the two kids in the first 27 minutes. I wanted everybody to get killed in the force. Well, well the stuff was happening. The the stuff was happening, but it was very subtle. You know. Oh no, I'm watching it. Trust me. Oh, I mean, I'm was, I'm picking up everything going on, and then you know something real to happen. This is very new. Too slow for you. It wasn't real. It was like finally after what, it was about two hours. Then you know they're in the. I'm like going. Well, it's a it's a pacing issue. It it was just long, drawn out. Didn't like the two freaking kid characters. The two, okay, yeah. okay. The opening sequence when the when the not the opening sequence, but early on when the Nazi was in the cabin with the family and the mother had just uh, lectured her son on you know not going with the resistance or whatever. Then he came, and, and then when he, he he's like the Nazis trying to connect with the children, and they can sense his evil. You know, they kind of uh, yeah. wretch whenever mm -hmm. he you know that was powerful. And then like when. Uh, when uh, Fiora or whatever, like when they were trying to escape through the uh, the landscape, and they get into the the quicksand, and, oh yeah, uh, the bog, yeah, yeah, the bog, and then and then the paranoia mm. that she had, you know, he thought that they had a chemistry going, and he found out very quickly that she would turn on him mm -hmm. in a split second to save herself. I mean, all that stuff was like really powerful, and kind of to uh, to like rebut the the pacing element of it. It, in a sense, it almost, you know, its own way, kind of resembles war itself because there's a whole lot of nothing going on, followed by, you know, very, a very rapid, very rapid moments of shitting your pants. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I saw two hours and 40 minutes in subtitles, and I was like, yeah, I can't get through fucking Explorers in one day. I'm not going to be able to get through this at all. <laughs> that I agree with. What? You didn't enjoy Explorers? I, I, explore, exp I, I No, no, it's nothing to do with, exp with enjoying it. It literally is the fact that between my kids, my dogs, and my oh, wife got, and me do things, it's literally worry, just we'll like... Have, we'll, have a, we'll have a minute to shit on Explorers or, or support it. It's yeah. like between between those three things, it's just, and between like podcast editing and everything too. It's like f pausing it every five minutes to do something. So I will, there's say, a real reason I will why. say to Casey, it's pretty cruel to make me watch Explorers and then not come on the fucking pod. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's why not here. We'll get we'll get to Explorers. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I think he chose Explorers because he knew he wouldn't show up. Yeah. A cruel joke. Man. I, I, I think he chose Explorers so he wouldn't get forced into choosing okay. Nightmare on Elm Street too. I could see we're obviously on Explorers now for some reason, but I could see being <laughs> a little kid and, and digging that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I loved it when I was a kid. Yeah. Like I, I did too. Absolutely loved it. If, if, you're, the right, if you're the right age child. for it, but, that's probably yeah. why Casey brought it on. Honestly, I think he was a kid when that came out, or like at least a very young kid, I believe, because yeah. he's not much. He's not. He's not much older than me. So I mean, he's only. He'd have to be young, but. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'll admit now that I think about it, I was uh I was eighteen. <laughs> but I still loved it. You still yeah. love kid movies. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still love silly. good I still love good kid movies. Good kid movies. <laughs> right. There's a key word there. Good. And in fact, uh let me just let me just do explorers for Casey. Like, uh he calls okay. it schlock. Uninteresting and overwrought. Targets a young audience walking in the footsteps of Goonies and Gremlins. So he specifically that's mentions two good those aren't notes. Faces. Oh, those aren't faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. Okay. <laughs> Casey didn't call it schlock. Never mind. But it, he does, in this little blurb, it does specifically mention Goonies and Gremlins. And it it has its moments. I don't think it's dated and boring. Well, I think it's a little dated, but I never thought it was boring. That's I think not, it's cute. It's not boring. I mean, it's not really boring. Yeah. I, yeah. I I mean, in certain parts kind of dragged on, but it also could be. Right. Like, I, paused, I paused it so many times. I like, you have to be like, wait, what the fuck were they doing last night when I was watching this? But <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. Well, you mentioned, you mentioned Goonies and I Gremlins did. and only one of those movies is good and it's not Goonies. Yeah. I ranked it. <laughs> yeah, and, oh, I, yeah. I'm not going to argue about Goonies at this point, but uh, what is it um, with this movie? I do believe Surprise nobody picked it. That the, the premise. Oh, Goonies uh, wrong year. Oh, Wasn't it that the previous year? Yeah, that was yeah, '84, I think. Mm. Yeah, um, it's but, on this uh, list. Oh, okay. Well, never wow. mind. But um, nobody's got Goonie one fever. Of the, yeah. One of the things about <laughs> ranked, Explorers that I, I liked was the fact out that of 40. it's not um, the first time she got in trouble reading my notes and no. not understanding what I meant when I wrote it. I think I understand what you meant. I just disagree. Uh -oh. Okay, but, but I, I know the Goonies say that, and watching what's from what's that's not 1985. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Goonies and Aaron's is. saying Goonies is 1985. Goonies oh, is was, it? Gremlins was not. Okay. Okay. I'm Never sorry. mind. But that's beside the point. In Explorers, the one thing that I do like in Explorers is the fact that these kids are, you know, the the especially the protagonist, the one who really wants to go to space. Um, they're going to meet this advanced culture. And what they find is two teenagers that have run away with daddy's ship. Mm -hmm. And that's very disappointing to, you know, our main character. Mm -hmm. And that's, I find that interesting. He does continue with his joy of space, I'm assuming. But I mean, that's what I would like to know. What happens to these kids? Where do they end up? Well, I, we, I we do all, remember that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, yeah. Jeremy. We we all know where River Phoenix ended up. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the Viper. Where did, where did I, the character yeah. end up? Lisa, to your point, I remember that movie feeling yeah. like when it ended, it felt like the end of the second act to me. Like when I was a kid, you know, yeah. I saw it, I was like nine or ten. I remember thinking like, oh, there's going to be another. They're, they're going to meet another race. I, wanted another like, I thought there were going to be three, you know, and there were only uh -huh. that one. And then they go home. And I was like, oh, OK, it ended. And I'm, I'm thinking that what happened was uh, box office. It they ended abruptly and then for movies. some reason replayed itself on Pluto TV. <laughs> I mean, if, if it came out the same time as Back to the Future, I could see why box office got nailed on it. But oh, you know. yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it was I think it was hoisted on the petard of better movies. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But given a good amount of time, I think a part two would have been very could have been interesting. I mean, Ethan Hawke's still alive, so I mean, in theory, if they found someone who was a close enough look alike to River Phoenix, they could probably pull it uh, off. Like his name Ethan is Joaquin. Hawk. His name could... is Joaquin. Just take off the Joker makeup. You, I, I would, I would do uh, the the Joaquin, the the River is dead. You know, when you do the yeah. the, the reboot, he is dead, and they yeah. can look at his picture, and they can be sad about it, and that sort of thing. You know? Right? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm gonna go there for us, buddy. Yeah, so yeah like, exactly. In space, but yeah. Ethan, Ethan Hawke, you know, goes forward with it because he, he, he like continued to have the dreams about like the computer chips and stuff. So like, yeah. say he followed that throughout, you know, his school history or whatever, and then the sequel could be he finally develops the master chip that he was thinking of the whole time and mm -hmm. comes up with a fancy schmancy you know thingy majig because our 
Yeah, his CGI. daughter. His his daughter's got to be involved uh, in some way. Oh here, yeah, right? na- naturally, <laughs> naturally, of course. Yeah, you got to get uh, that. You got to get that feel good moment in. Mm-hmm. I mean, he could be working for NASA in the freaking sequel. So that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Ethan Hawke would, would be. Ethan or Hawk an be internship, a college internship, but now, of course, it would have to be his daughter receiving the. You know the the. Because he wasn't so much dreaming about the chips, chip as. Uh, and, as receiving a dream thing, mm, right, right, uh, right? Okay, like he was receiving right, yeah. a signal. So maybe, yeah, maybe he's maybe he's homeless and he's like, you know, they, they think he's crazy and he's on the street, and then his daughter has to come back and get him, and then they go to space because <laughs> she starts. Ooh, that's that's an idea. <laughs> or maybe his he he's got this like nothing career. He ended up right. in the space industry somehow, but something you know like. Oh no, he does salvage. Well, you gotta remember too <laughs> right, that um, right. Ethan Hawke's girlfriend there He's later on is gonna be with McDreamy and uh, Sanford can't Sanford buy me Sanford. love. Oh, right, right. <laughs> McDreamy. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Praises we... Tim's, right? It yeah. does, yeah. <laughs> McDreamy Pee-wee. could be his Pee-wee. daughter's stepdad. So, so, so if anybody hasn't heard we have do you know what episode number it was phil we have an episode we have an episode previously with tim Lytel. well that, we can let uh, two episodes actually we did a whole episode on peewee of, exactly yeah. one of them is on specifically peewee's big well, adventure. looking up the number yeah. tim why don't oh, you I start see. I see. Uh, but P- I see. So Pee Wee's Big Adventure is a 1985 uh, surreal comedy directed by Tim Burton um, about the character Pee Wee Herman who loses his bike and finds it. Um, I don't want to waste too much time on this. Uh, you know, Pee Wee's Big Adventure isn't my number one of this year, actually. I kind of have to yeah. say it's Back to the Future. Um, and Come and See is like really, really good. Yeah, it too, doesn't, but... doesn't have to be your number one, but yeah, back to yeah. the future was. But, it is, but it is like a favorite. You know what I mean? It is like, yeah. Yeah, I really, really love it. Um, it's so funny. You know, it's funny that we're talking about Explorers. Explorers, I loved as a kid. I watched it again, maybe in my 30s. And I was like, eh, you know, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, People's Big Adventure, I watched, you know, in my 30s and my 40s. I still love it. I still laugh out loud at it. It, it really holds up from when i was yeah. six years old to when i'm 46 years old i mean it's it's amazing i meant um, to do that yeah it's got so many classic lines uh such great actors um you know i remember I, we've I, talked about the screenplay being the perfect screenplay too we right. did we talked about that on the episode and I, I i definitely think it is it is like a master class in like three act structure uh if you're interested in screenwriting read that script um because the guys who wrote it were actually, you know, Paul Rubens and Phil Hartman wrote it, and they, they, literally like took the Sid Field book and like went beat for beat to write the movie. So it's a great like real life example of how yeah, how you they, can do that. They followed the instructions to the to the T, and you mm-hmm. know, I think and it worked. Minutes long, and each act ended at thirty, and they did all the whatever the various Sid Field rules were. Yeah, the act the act beats and the midpoint twist and the the third act uh going going into the the new world, I guess is what that's called. I don't know what Sid Field calls it, but anyway. Didn't and I, I feel like the uh the major actors that they got to do these minor roles, it gave them a chance in a very small space to go over the top. Yeah. You know, to, to yeah. explore the craft. Definitely. Because they knew they could be silly, but not necessarily, you know, embarrassing. When you look back on it, I think um, we didn't talk about it too much, but I think that Phil Hartman's uh, influence is like all over it. You know, his yeah. fingerprints are all over it. If you yeah. look at his yeah. SNL skits and uh, his work on news radio, it's all that kind of irony and uh uh, type of comedy absurdist irony yeah i love it i love it so Cisco was wrong he, Cisco shed all oh. over it <laughs> look at that just, chicken there's a rooster he wants, on he wants camera. somebody oh. to say nice cock and i'm I not love roosters we'll go to any lengths for that this is for the misses nice cock jeremy <laughs> I, I hear that. I hear that too often. I hear that too often. But uh, that was a hen, not a rooster. 
Uh, we uh, have no, no we have no rooster. The last one got taken out by Burr Prey. Oh no! I uh and in uh oh we no, do have, uh, our that friend would be Ken. amazingly cool to watch. <laughs> yeah, we always, saw friend... the, we always saw the end result. Really? That's from the vegan. I don't eat either of the birds. <laughs> That's true. Um, our our friend Ken has chickens. He is not. We are not allowed to have a rooster in the city of Norwood, but you can have up to five chickens. That was episode one thirty nine, Aaron. Episode one thirty nine, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That's right Pee-wee's around the time Adventure. that Paul Rubens passed. Yeah, rest yeah. in R.I.P. Paul Rubens. Yes. yes. And just real he's, quick, he, he's enjoying himself in a movie theater in space right now. There you yeah. Go. yeah, I hope so. Just real quick, Tim, what is uh, what uh, you're the uh, creator, writer, director of Man Baby, right? It's, I am. Uh, yeah. Streaming on Tubi right now for free. Everybody right. should go check it out. Right. Nice. Yeah, we Man saw Baby that. Movie that was, dot com. That was funny. That was it's really actually good. a very watchable movie. Nice. Uh, so you know. Yeah. Consider I, I the concept is so out there, and I really did actually enjoy watching it. Yeah, we got we got some pretty good reviews, some some bad were ones you, and some good ones. So. Were you aiming for <laughs> feminism, or did you just? Uh, Oh yeah, uh, accidentally fall over it. No, definitely. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, but you know, I, Man Baby's not supposed to be a political movie. It's very. It's supposed to yeah. be very apolitical. Um, yeah. I'm a. I'm. Well, that's still pretty awesome, though. I can't help it. I think I'm a feminist, you know. But um, but I, it's not supposed to be political in any way. It's supposed to be a, a you know, a goofy, a goofy movie about a man <laughs> who becomes a baby. Sir, yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's good. We watched. We watched it, and uh, yeah, we did another episode just about the Man Baby. But they, yeah, yeah. it was good. But not to accidentally. Ne- but that's what we did. Not to <laughs> neglect our friends from Maniacal Music Musings, Jeremy and Chancy, mm-hmm. um, have their own series of podcasts. Actually, and Chancy is sort of a podcast uh, journeyman. A journey. Yes, right? vagabond. I like that vagabond. I love it. I'm a vagabond. <laughs> Show up on a well, podcast near you. I've, I've, I've been saying about Chancy for fucking a year and a half, but no one ever listens when I say he's a vagabond was underneath the bridge. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, that, that show's great too. We, we love to go on there and uh, the brackets and uh, yeah. you know, talking music and just, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, untoward things sometimes, but good stuff. But Fighting the urge right. to say, I live in a van down by the river. Philip <laughs> <laughs> actually says that like at least once a week in some capacity, and sometimes there was, there was his functional. opportunity. Sometimes and it works. Secondary Rio. Right. And, and this I took, I, took I took his one for I took his reference to that for this week. He's got to wait seven days now before he can drop that line. Got it. <laughs> I'll find I'll find the right spot for it. Yeah, yeah. but um. This should scare the shit out of everyone, but uh, Bill is a teacher, a molder of young minds, so he'll be <laughs> continuing to teach. Uh... Go ahead, Bill. Talk about what I am making. trying to undo what COVID did. This making, crop of uh, making children's minds the... moldy. Oh, no. This crop of high schoolers might be the dumbest we've ever had. China's just licking his <laughs> lips waiting for this one to come out. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so stuff up. So, hi, kids. <laughs> And he's a baseball uh, manager for the school as well. Does a good, great job with that. Oh, so right your efforts are appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, at least it's your turn now for your movie. Okay. Well, I kind of almost feel like the uh, Breakfast Club speaks for itself. Um, the uh, the characters in Breakfast Club are the age of, um, well, all some of us. <laughs> Aaron, Philip, Bill, and I are all of an age, uh, and we are of the age of the Breakfast Club actors. So, no kidding. Um, no kidding. I feel like, and this was a movie about bullying, about pigeonholing, about the sadness of loneliness, and the desperation of feeling disaffected. I mean, you've got one character that's the bad boy who is basically been pigeonholed as a criminal you've got 
the the Jewish princess, you've got the jock, you've got the the nerdy kid, you've got the and and this felt like a major representation of all the types of people that you knew in high school. Then you've got the outsider, Ali Sheedy, who shows up for detention because she literally has nothing else to do. And she thought this might be fun or maybe not fun. I'm not really sure. But, you know, you've got all these different types of people and they're all separated by their social structure. And this is kind of the last time when that was a real thing. I guess it was somewhat in the 80s. But by the time you get to the computer age and Internet and video games, things are really different now. Plus, you've got woke culture. So the, the kids of today don't really live the same life we lived. I don't know about you, Tim, or uh, Chancey, Jeremy. How do you feel? Was your high school as divided socially? Yes. As, yes. Yeah? Very much so. Yeah, it still not, was. Not, not in a John Hughesian, depressing, horrible movie type of way, but I mean, it was similar. <laughs> this I mean, is a good movie. Shut your mouth, Jeremy. No. <laughs> I, I mean, you say the Breakfast Club speaks for itself, you say. The only thing John Hughes ever says that actually speaks for itself is when he says, please don't watch my movies. I'm done. Please don't watch my movies. I'm not making any more. Uh, mm. No, no, The Breakfast Club. I'm sorry. It's it's. I can watch that movie over and over. The, don't, you uh, don't you forget about me? Yeah, I want to forget about you. Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> Lisa, I, mean, I now, actually use that movie. Perfect. It's even in pitch pitch perfect. But let me ask: Were you guys divided by the brains, the jocks, the beauties? I mean, I, I have, I have kind of a, I came at this from a, you know, I went to all boys Catholic high school, so uh, it's a little bit different, you know, like, yeah. but, but I remember watching the breakfast club and thinking like, oh, that's what it might be like to, to be in a school where there's girls right. and boys together. It um, kind of was in my school. You was poor it? man. Yeah. You poor, you poor man. Going to an all boys school. That's, I can't yeah, imagine. It's, that's it was, torture. It's, I mean, there's some pluses and some minuses, I guess. Um, you know, in general, though, like, yeah, there's there's like cliques, I guess there's there's groups at my high school, but not in the not in that same way that there's in the Breakfast Club, I guess. But um, but there's got to be something about the Breakfast Club that like works because I like I instantly understood it, you know, like it wasn't like it was like watching a science fiction right. movie, <laughs> you know, yeah, it was the, it was, didn't feel that alien magic, I think. Right. There. Yeah. Yeah. There was something, you know. Uh, what about the red ass teacher? Did he have any redeeming qualities? I can't remember. Did he have? No, any? no, he was. I feel like the Breakfast Club had a um, the Bill a character. Charlie Brown kind of thing to it, Anti where adult. The, yes, yeah. and and the adult was almost like a caricature. Yeah, it was a character. It was background. I mean, the thing is, for me in the Breakfast Club, and I do kind of give this a little bit of a failing, but it wasn't about him. He was just a device almost mm -hmm. to, in, in, you know, to, to help their growth. Yeah. And that was the thing that I liked about it. It did show that people can grow, that people can change, that people can accept new ideas. Yeah. Uh, the one thing though is for me, a, a failing is that the adult didn't get included in the growth. I don't know. You got to like Carl, the custodial engineer. Yeah. Oh, well, but I think he was already woke. Yeah. I like because when he's down there talking and he's like, uh, when he goes, man, these kids are going to have to take care of me when I get older. And that guy looks at me and goes, do you really think they're going to take care of you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. I saw the movie in the theater. That's another one I saw in the theater. It was, I remember that summer, it was like wildly popular. People were talking about it at school mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see it on cable, but yeah. Yeah. Phil and I were class of 86. Bill would have been 85. Five, yeah. Lisa I was 85. What? 85 as well. Okay. We were Lisa, I actually yet. used that movie we when I taught psychology yet. class. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. I was born before all of y'all people. 
<laughs> respect. We should do one sometime because I know you've used other movies in your class. We got to do one uh, bracket or something in movies that Bill used in his class or something. Oh, I've done one play of the Cuckoo's Nest. That Ooh, one, I did it. Oh, I've got. I, to be honest, the one, it, it's funny because the older it. movies the kids really enjoy. They love One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, Ordinary People, they love that mm. movie. Chinatown yeah. would be a good one. So, oh, like, <laughs> so yeah, it kind of it kind of surprised me that the newer movies were the ones that they're like, that's ah, all right, but we kind of dig the the ones from in, the late seventies. In my in my high school religion class, we watched uh, Woody Allen, Crimes and Misdemeanors, which oh, wow. uh, I had seen that for the first time, and that always stuck with me as being like a really good one for that's for cool. high school religion, you know. Anyway, well, Aaron, we got uh, a number of you know almost as many yeah. that we have that we don't have people I'll, here. For. I'll just run down the list. Right. So, will will nominated Back to the Future? Um, I mean, you got to talk a little about Back to the Future. I mean, I, I, yeah, I would love to speak to that. Yeah, I yeah, I think yeah. Back to the Future is probably one of the best okay. movies of all time. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I would say that that's in my top ten of all time. The first one, the first one at least, not the second one. The first one, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole, well, this is only counting the, whole, the, the one whole trilogy. The whole trilogy is good. Yeah, I love them all, but really, back to the, that first one, Back to the Future. Um, you know, I did, I saw it on VHS. I didn't see it when it came out. I saw it later, oh, wow. yeah. but oh, yeah. it has just always held up for me. I've seen it as a little kid, seeing it older. Like it's it's emotional. It's funny. Great what special about his effects. Father. Hanging off a tree <laughs> limb to try to catch a glimpse of a girl. Yeah, oh, yeah there's a lot home. of his dad's a a perv. Things that, yeah, things that we <laughs> things that are not woke. I think one of five thousand. One of the lines. There's a, there's a big racial element in that. You know, I don't know if y'all remember yeah. that. If you're speaking about woke stuff, the, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, yeah, how Marty McFly invents influences. rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, basically, this <laughs> is yeah. Chuck Berry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not like, not too cool. Not a good look. <laughs> not yeah. Chuck's cousin that got on the phone to Chuck. And yeah. Said, hey man, you got to yeah. check out this Marty McFly. You know that was that was right. Silly. Or uh, the or the incestual incestuous date rape incident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one? that I still that I feel like it kind of holds up. I mean, I guess the the date yeah. rape, is, but the, the incest thing is kind of interesting. The in, the inc the incestual thing. I think uh, I don't know if that I don't know. Do people do people cancel? Inse I guess people have always canceled incest. Right. I mean, not, not, not in Alabama, but <laughs> right, right. Not, not in the British royal family or right, the right, Egyptian right. royals. Shout out to our it Alabama. Was standard practice. It's still standard <laughs> practice for the British. There you go. There you go. Well, can we? Yeah, can we? Go, thank you. Can that we go ahead and say it? it uh, hey, yeah. my mother uncle married his cousin. Time, so. How it about the uh, cousin. cousin marriage is a way to keep generational wealth? That's the yeah. the, the, the rich people have always known this. They met each other at the family that? reunion, and there is how no generational wealth. Of, uh, Huey Lewis, right? Early on, yeah. where he's uh, in the gymnasium, right? He's like a, a he's a administrator at a school or something. Teacher, yeah, he's like the guy who decides whose bands play in the in the dance. Right, he's got like that bullhorn. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the one that um, Huey did the soundtrack because he learned his lesson from Ghostbusters, right? Oh, um, right. He stole they, his. Ray Parker stole his. Music. They went and ripped him off anyway. <laughs> right. Interesting. I didn't know so, that backstory. Yeah. Yeah, me neither. Um. So Brewster's Millions was a shit show, right? I mean. What, Anybody want to stand up for that? <laughs> no. That's, that's, and that's I actually up. enjoyed it. It's the got movie. some laughs. I loved it when I was a kid. Oh, it's, a couple it's of We all funny. loved it when we were a kid. And now it, hold, it holds right. up as well as wet toilet. The paper. only thing good about that movie is fucking Richard Pryor, man. Yeah, and he's nice not to good see in him, it. But he's not. Uh, yeah, I mean, see, it's see, not his best. Nice. I was just, I, the only way to watch is to pay for it, and I was not going to pay for that fucking movie. So, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I, Has anyone seen the know. original? The uh, the original Brewster's Millions? The original That's, Brewster's Millions? No, I didn't know that. it's a remake. There's, a, a, there's remake. a remake, yeah. yeah. The original is actually free on YouTube, because I almost started watching that, and I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't the new one. Yeah. That was the new one any better? Was the new one, well, I mean, was the old one, was I, the new one any better? I, 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 I only started watching it for a few seconds, I'm like, why is this black and white? Yeah, yeah. 
I'm curious about the old one. I might try yeah. to watch it at some point. Yeah, report yeah. back. It's on I feel, like it, was, I feel yeah. like it was an attempt to try to uh, uh, rescue Pryor's career after. Was this after his incident where he was almost killed himself? He yeah. set himself on fire. I feel like it was an attempt to try to uh, repackage Richard Pryor as a family. He had, he had a heart attack and then he set himself on fire with a, a free base cocaine pipe yeah, yeah. Right. he was more of a disciple of like lenny bruce and stuff i mean he was his humor was all yeah supposed to be on the you know cutting edge very so, adult so i thought it was a fail you know richard pryor as a baseball pitcher just was not working out one bit <laughs> <laughs> well that's a good way for him to lose money though <laughs> by by the team and then pitch shitty right that's true Probably going to throw as hard as Otani does now. Mm-hmm. I, know. I could only find Brazil in French in uh, German language. I that's could, unfortunate I find because it's oh. a great film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah we Although, didn't find it in English, and the subtitles were uh, terrible. Yeah, they it, it was awful. Be, it would be nutty to watch it in German, actually. Yeah. Yeah. To see Michael Palin speaking uh, Sprecher de Deutsch, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but I, and so I feel like it's the one film on this list that I didn't give a fair assessment. Of, but yeah, it's pretty great. I, you, I'm you a go back and Brazil watch it. supporter. Let me see where yeah. I ranked it on the De Niro in that. I forgot fantastic. about De Niro in it. Yeah, it's... and like I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't feel... think it was. A, I didn't think we even found it to purchase in English. That might have really? been. Really. I'm occasionally willing to throw a little bit of cash at this just to get it done. Yeah, sure. Shout out to the Thousand Oaks Library. They had it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think it might be on Canopy. Like, it might, you might want to check. It might, it might I'm not sure if it's check. streaming or not, but it, it feels, it feels like it's streaming on Canopy. It brings good stuff to the show. It's, so I, yeah. it's, on, Am- it's, it's on Amazon, but you got to pay for it. Gotcha. Gotcha. If you need me to, I can ship you my beta. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, by the way, send the beta machine, too. <laughs> Of, of all the movies of 1985, I ranked Brazil five. I, so I was, yeah. I was Aaron, Purple Rose in Cairo, Tampa Po. Hold on, hold on. We're going to go rounds for that, right? Let's all get right. these other movies. <laughs> Eyes Like Us. Yeah. I felt like that was, that was, uh, that was, I, I was surprised about that. I thought, I thought Chevy Chase was surprisingly good in that. Yeah. It's, no, it's, him, you know, him and Dan Ackward are both amazing in that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember and, and, hating that movie back in the '80s, being so disappointed in both of those guys. I I, I got to say, I, I haven't Dan watched Aykroyd it. And I loved Ch- Chevy Chase, and I thought, at least in the '80s, that was one of the worst movies. I've ever seen. <laughs> I haven't it watched it in like 20 years, so I just the decline of Dan Aykroyd right there. Yeah, but you love Fletch. I love right? Fletch. Yeah. yeah, that's another one. That was Brian's choice because Fletch is. Che- or, uh, he that's the main one for Jeb there. Yeah, that was getting better. Nice <laughs> yeah. My we, my thing with Fletch is I I find it somewhat of a situation where Chevy Chase thinks he's better than everybody else because I mean Aaron points out the humor of the <laughs> fake names that he uses, but they're so stupid. That's and just Chevy like, Chase. It's everybody <laughs> else is dumb. Um, that's just Chevy, that, yeah. that's just that's just Chevy Chase in real life. Are you freaking kidding me? Right, right. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like, <laughs> okay. Dr. Rosen, so Rosen. Who? Dr. Rosen penis. Who? <laughs> Dr. Rosen. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, yeah, his yeah, and 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 he, I know he's trying to get his, away with something, and and a lot of people the just spleen was he a just spit bulldozes image of my dead his uncle. way through mm-hmm. in such a way that people just they don't have time to actually process. A lot of people don't. And some people are like, "Uh, oh, no, no," and those are the ones that challenge him. John Cocktoaston. <laughs> Come on, you gotta like when he's bent over singing "Moon River." You got the whole fist up there, Doc. Using the whole fist, Doc. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I like it's all like, about ball bearings. I like this like NBA fantasies. Mm-hmm. I thought that was funny. You know, it's like mm-hmm. he wouldn't be able to ball with the uh, you know Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Magic or whatever, but. He, he's he six five, six seven with the afro. Well, yeah, that's true. He may, maybe, maybe, but um, yeah, he is tall. That was that was Chick Hearn, right? 
But based on a lot of people I know, told does not make you a good basketball player. That's the late famous Lakers announcer Chick Hearn, I believe, is doing the. Uh... Okay, I did not know mm. that. Interesting. Doing the what? Doing the uh, commentary during his yeah. fantasy sequences. That, that yeah. interview, that post game interview with with Fletch. Mm. Well, then it looks like Silverado. There's a little bit. He's talking. To, I think he's talking to Kareem for a second. Yeah. Fletch is really key out there. <laughs> does does really anybody particularly want to talk to Silverado? Because I, I would uh, like to, if not. It's I, actually the one. It's actually the one freaking movie that on this list that I haven't seen before that actually impressed me. Yeah, so. it was good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know you, know that, I, you know how I feel about westerns. If if you remember our mustache <laughs> movie debate on Tombstone, but I uh, yeah, I freaking this was actually a good western, and that's hard to yeah. say for me. Those two words are separate in my dictionary. You I said you didn't. I you said you didn't the watch middle. my. Sorry, Aaron. Mm -hmm. I'm done. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, you said you didn't watch uh, Come and See, did you, Jeremy? Uh, I did not have time for two two an hour and forty minute movies with subtitles. I'm no, no, <laughs> no. Time does not permit. That makes sense. Then we should we should also shout out Shella at some point. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody picked that, but that's a remarkable what? movie. It's about, I wasn't uh, going to make anybody watch a nine-hour movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah fuck no. that. Fuck that. And they weren't going to do it. Nine-hour documentary. No. Uh, nine-hour do documentary and present day. What's it called? Shoa. S-H-O-A. I, ha I, have, I have that. Oh. Yeah, I have that. And I've watched it. So, I mean, yeah. I, I, so, what's, what's your yeah. opinion on it? It's... Um, Siskel it, ranked mean, at number one, and Ebert didn't really put it in his top ten, but he said, I think it's above the top ten. Yeah, I mean, it's super – I mean, I thought it was a super well, – I, I hate saying things like that because of, you know, the uh, the uh, material of it. Uh -huh. But, like, uh, I thought it's it was – It's Holocaust it was great, survivors in present-day 80s. yeah. Mm. It was a great movie. Like it was well put together. You know, I mean, it was. I saw it, some basically of the clips, like there's a barber, you know, telling his story. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know all I remember about anything that I've seen. Yeah, it. It, I mean, it, it gets really intense because like they tell they basically tell the stories about uh, what happened and stuff, and it. Shit gets a little bit hard to watch every now and then. Coming from the guy who recommended come and see. I know that's what I'm saying. Like essentially, that that documentary is the real life visualization of what come and see is, in part, trying to it's like a get across. Yeah. So <laughs> where where would you rank it? If it, uh, I mean, uh, if assuming, we were actually going to pick out, I think it is. If he had, if out of the two, come and see and uh, Shoa. Uh, ooh. Uh, I would say Shoa because it's fact based. Like, I mean, come and see is still somewhat fact based, but like it's based on stories from the people who lived it, translated into a fictional feature film. To where his show is literally just like, it's literally come and see the reality version. Yeah. I would definitely, I would, yeah, for sure. I would definitely put show over come and see. Cool. Yeah. Well, the last thing I'll say about Silver, not to, it's a terrible transition, but one thing I wanted to say about Silverado is it, uh -huh. it should have been about his hat. And that should have been it. <laughs> it got too complicated. But like high noon, fistful of dollars, best westerns are always some kind of simple principle. And it was a very ambitious and good movie. I mean, it was a good movie, but to me, it got a little bit off the rails, you know, a little bit off the rails with the, the plot twist. It, Jeff, hey, Jeff, Go Jeff Goldblum was a cowboy. That's all I'm going to say. Jeff, fucking Jeff Goldblum was a cowboy. <laughs> okay. And, and, and I want to say this is what I wanted to say. I saw Silverado when it came out originally and my dad was all into going to see it and I went with him and I saw Silverado again and the things that stood out to me still to this day, the things that moved me were the storyline for Linda Hunt and the storyline for Jeff Goldblum because Linda Hunt broke my heart and Jeff Goldblum 
was a bad guy. And he kind of broke my heart, too, because he was a coward. I mean, I kind of saw him as that character. Hmm. He he had campaigned to play that character. Should have been just, should have been Kevin Klein trying to find his get his hat back. That should have been it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't take him long to get his hat back, did it? No, it didn't. That's Philip's problem. He thinks the movie should have ended when he got his hat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, wow. Mm-hmm. Did ever, does everybody have their list together, or people have to like do it on the fly? I got I got mine ready. I'm ready. Hey, I might have to. You might have to do some scribbling here. So the um, scribbling. You, if you look on the contestants page, huh? The nominations Aaron, are column B. Are you able to share, Aaron? Uh, okay. Let let's see. That. So I could do share let screen. See. I mean, you one's... have time because Philip, Aaron, Philip, and I have all submitted our our choices. Huh? Already. So um, you have you have a moment. I mean, I've I've got mine already written out. Same. I mean, oh, let's see. How do yeah, I do go this? Ahead and, go ahead, Chancy, <laughs> and uh, read yours off to me. What's your all number right. one? Come and see. Uh, just uh, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, number two. Ran. Number three. Purple Rose of Cairo. Number four. Silverado. Number five. Breakfast Club. Number six. Reanimator. Number seven. Spies Like Us. Number eight. Explorers. Number nine. Clue. Number 10. Brewster's Millions. Number 11. Back to the Future. Number 12. Brazil. 13. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. 14. Fletch. Fletch, last place. Ouch. My heart. I'm not. I honestly, I. it's really, mo- it's like, I only, dude, honestly, Spies Like Us would have been number 13, but it yeah. had Richard Pryor in it. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know why, but I just really don't care for Chevy Chase. Like, yeah, he just the the I, stories that you hear of him apple, being. Apple. I only like I I like him in several of his earlier movies. I think the only thing I ever enjoyed him in was like Caddyshack. I like him in Caddyshack. I like him yeah. in and Wild maybe Play. and maybe Christmas Vacation. That might be about it. Caddyshack yeah. too. Okay, I love uh, him in the vacation movies. I'm sorry, I do. He's not he in the But like, basically, everything else, you can literally see what all the stories about him being this just petulant asshole. Yeah. Just oh, really a, shine a through. He's a dick. Yeah. Right. Hey, Bill, what's and your number one? I've got Reanimator number one. Number two. Breakfast Club number two. Oh, Flatch no. number three. Okay. Number number three. Number three. Uh, Back to the Future number four. Silverado number five. Purple Rose of Cairo number six. Spies Like Us number seven. Uh, Explorers number eight. Clue number nine. Uh, Come and See number 10. Pee Wee 11. Then Brazil, then Ron, or Ran, or however one pronounces, and the last one's that shitty Richard Pryor and Brewster's Millions. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Jeremy, number one. Uh, number one is Clue, of course. Got to keep the trend going here. But everybody picked their own as their first one. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, no, Phil didn't. didn't. Phil didn't. Philip didn't. He picked Phil's the see. Phil's different. Well, Phil's different. And he respects movies, but uh, number two. I've changed my number one. Number Tim two said he didn't this. either. Yeah, number I'm going to change my number one. Well, I don't blame you, but number two is Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> number three is Spies Like Us. <laughs> I don't blame you. No, okay. Number number four is Purple Rose of Cairo. Okay, you're wrong there, but I'm not. No, just kidding. Number, number five, five. Is Silverado. <laughs> 
Uh, number six is Reanimator. Oh yeah, Bill. I forgot to say. It. Actually, I wa- I started watching that like halfway through. I'm like, I've seen this before. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I think it was for, I think it was for masturbators, but I've seen this before. I and I'm like, seen it before and I'm like, why am I wasting time watching this again? I mean, I finished it, but still, I'm like, why am I watching ta- wasting my time watching this again? God damn it! Because you can watch it again and again and again and love it every time. And it's not going to be your your top one. <laughs> it, it, it ain't going to be my top one, fucking regardless. But uh, oh, yeah. number number seven was oh. Explorers. Hold on one second, Mass. Debaters, M A S S space D E B A T E R S. Okay, go ahead. Is it E R S yeah, or O R S? Make make sure you spell that right. <laughs> right. It's always a fun time masturbating. But right. uh, number eight was Brewster's Millions because I've seen it before and it never impressed me. But and then the next three are interchangeable because I didn't see any of them. Uh, but number nine, come and see, and that just happens randomly, Chancy. Number okay. ten, number ten ran. I guess didn't watch it. Couldn't do subtitles for two Anything hours. Anything with minutes. subtitles, I see. No, I could do subtitles sometimes. Just if it's like an hour and a half horror movie, sure. If it's like two hours and forty two minutes, like no, nah, fuck that. All right, eleven. Uh, Brazil couldn't find it anywhere to watch. Okay, <laughs> twelve. Uh, I guess I'll do Fletch number twelve because I haven't seen that in a long ass time, and it wasn't on the list I had in the pin messages that it was even on this. So. Uh. It's on titles I, tab. I, I blame Phil for that, but uh, I don't look at the sheet, dude. I look at the messenger. <laughs> but number 12 was Pee Wee's Big Adventure because I fucking can't stand Paul Rubin as Pee Wee's. I prefer him in like Gotham as Mr. Cobblepot. Oh, I loved him as Cobblepot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Great. And yeah. number, I like number, th- blow. and number 13 is The Breakfast Club because John Hughes can keep burning in hell where he is. <laughs> <laughs> 14? Just, that just back 14. to uh, oh. 14, subtitles yeah. again. I imagine the ones that have like some cool jazz playing over the subtitles might be more acceptable. Not for me. Yeah. No, that would trigger me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like cool Kenny jazz G jazz triggers <laughs> my my ADD rage. <laughs> but it's really cool on Cinemax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Tim, do you Not think you have, your, uh, you have your? I do. I have my list here. Okay. Aaron, if you're ready. Number ready. One. I got Back to the Future, number one. All right. I hope I did this right. Let me see. I hope I got them all. I got Back to the Future. I got Pee Wee's Big Adventure. All right. I got Come and See. All right. I got Rand. All right. I got Purple Rose of Cairo. All right. Brazil. The Reanimator. Silverado. The Breakfast Club. Clue, and then pulling up the rear, Spies Like Us, The Explorers, Fletch, and Brewster's Millions. All right. right. That means that we have, before I'm not going to reveal it yet, but we have in the results now, knowledge of who the Felix is, unless it's a tie. Did nobody else even... None of the people not here didn't even get the rankings even. I didn't. Oh, interesting. No, we didn't we didn't put out the we didn't put out we the didn't rankings. send a reminder for it to them. It was too much of a I don't know. I felt like uh You're not gonna be there it felt like yeah. a hall monitor or something like that. I was like, felt, yeah. Yeah. Let felt it go. like a nag last time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. Well, did I'll you send one time. message saying please include your rankings? Not this Here's no, I, I said I'm not gonna do that. That wouldn't have been time. nagging. I'll, I'll do the nagging One next time. message. You do the yeah, nagging. Yeah, Eric can do that it's next much, time. It's much easier coming from you, I think. And I think this is enough of a sampling. I don't this know is why good... that would be. 50%. I mean, that's I, what I'm you get when you're at. That's what you get at the it's, vote. It's enough, it's enough of a sampling. I don't know why it would be easier coming from me. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like a good list. This is a good list. I'm yeah. happy yeah. with this. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy with this. It's not bad at all. It's kind of funny. I guess uh, he will not be here, though, to pick up his... His award, right? Because he's fam- <laughs> famous. Famously, does not uh, go to the Academy Awards. You know, right? So I assume he will, will not. Will not be either. with us this evening. <laughs> so, movies busy with, his, busy with his daughter. We should talk. We should talk now, probably about the uh, honor. Okay, mentions. that's why I don't watch his movies. Oh, <laughs> well, this is Aaron's rank. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you can see, if you're able to see my rankings here. Uh, yeah, I can see your screen. Mm-hmm. Reanimator so, uh, dead last place. Uh, 
There's a shocker. Yeah. yeah. Purple Rose of Cairo, we are already discussed. Tampopo was a Japanese delight about a noodle restaurant. Noodles. Um, yeah, the I think Tampopo means dandelion, and it's the girl's name, the lady's name that runs the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And uh, these these truck drivers, uh, one of them takes a leave of absence to teach her how to make better noodles. <laughs> it's just, it's nutty, but it's great. Um, after sounds, hours, there's a similar movie uh, called the. Uh, I don't know if it's the Noodle Girl. No, they might. Where this. Huh? Kind of. This Caucasian girl goes to Japan with her boyfriend. He breaks up with her and she ends up glomming onto this noodle restaurant and asking them to teach her how to make noodles. Uh, it's uh, sort of similar. It's actually I guess. really cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is um this is Japanese and subtitled. I definitely would have put this on, on my list for sure. This number two of yours, Aaron. Yeah, I, I like I it. Dug it. After hours is a Scorsese movie. This one too. I love this one. Yeah. Um, I saw that. Yeah, yeah that was good. That was I had good. to. I had to sit with that one for a while. I, I've, at first, I wasn't even sure if I liked it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I had to, had to mm-hmm. let it kind of sink in, and and um, yeah, I couldn't stop thinking about that movie for a few days. Fletch, I've always loved the one-liners in that movie. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. ball bearings and the whole fist and everything. Yeah, the ball bearings. I like <laughs> yeah, that. All right. Right. Brazil. Uh, all about ball bearings. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised Brazil's as low as number five, but it is. Mm. Back to the Future. I'm surprised that's as low as number six, but it is. Mask. I'm surprised nobody mentioned. That was a phenomenon. That that was. That was a big that mask movie. is really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Color purple. Nobody mentioned either, and that like. Uh, 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 color purple is confusing and, dra- and dragged out. It's coming. I back. felt it was dry. They're doing a remake. But oh right. yeah, the color saw, purple remake saw a poster. But yes, speaking speaking of dry, Albert Brooks lost in America. Love that like one. Next. Yeah, I love that I one. Love, yeah. The best part is um, is Julie Haggerty in the casino, <laughs> mm-hmm. just losing her mind. She's got everything riding on it. She's on twenty two, and she's going twenty two, 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 two. After everything's gone, she's just kind of st- stuttering twos. <laughs> I love it when he uh, has to uh, negotiate the return of his wife from the guy that's like, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his commandeered her, you know, has he's, her over. Yeah. yeah. There's that part where he's, uh, what, you know, what if you give us the money back? <laughs> yeah, right, right. I love that. I love that. He's just like, what, it's, it, that's, the, that's what I do. I'm an advertising. Yeah. The yeah. Casino was, that cares. That was Gary Marshall, right? right? The casino yeah, manager. Yeah, that was Gary oh. Marshall. Oh. Marshall. Albert Brooks is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fritzy's Honor, I thought was uh, Angelica Houston's best role that I've seen. And then, uh, I can't stand her for some reason. Something about her yeah. I dislike. We, we've actually documented the fact that I don't like Kathleen Turner unless she's Jessica Rabbit. Right. <laughs> and then it's because she's not visible. She's just a. She's just drawn that way. I love mm. Kathleen Turner. I, I, we got to do a sidebar on that. Yeah. Today, Aaron. I don't want to say. Movies by Kathleen, movies of Kathleen Turner, or roles because she does play Chandler's mom in Friends. I saw Kathleen Turner in a movie with Burt Reynolds where they were like uh, TV reporters. It's like a, it's like His Girl Friday, but it's from the eighties. Oh, yeah. Have that. you all seen that one? You remember that yeah, one? I, think that, yeah. Yeah. I remember that at least. It's on, it's on Tubi. That. It's kind of it's in weird. The co- cocaine eighties <laughs> era. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, number ten was Pee Wee. Which knocked Ron to number eleven. Uh-oh. Color purple twelve. Gonna go through them faster now. Sure thing. Real genius. Fool for love. Crime wave. Crime wave. Is that Lars von Trier? Who's that? What is okay, crime we wave? Need, we need three. One. Real genius didn't make this list, and it should have. Oh no! No. Al Kilmer's best role. Yes. If uh, yes, absolutely. Crime wave directed by Sam, Sam Raimi. Raimi. Oh, Raimi. yeah. Lesser, if I wouldn't have picked Come and See, I would have absolutely picked like Real Genius. And it's, on, color it's on Prime with no extra fees. Mask. Yeah. It's on Tubi. Uh, it's on Flex. Got to check out. Yeah. Crime yeah. Wave, Popcorn I guess. alone in Real Genius is is like. You can ask Philip. I'm an aficionado of popcorn. Bruce Campbell's awesome too. 
Yes, yeah, Bruce Campbell Bruce as Autolycus. Yeah. And Bruce he's Campbell, that's he's Bruce Campbell's in Crime Wave. I think that every mo- yeah. every B yeah. movie every B movie gives Bruce Campbell uh uh money. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and yeah, Mary Hartman, because Mary Hartman. He's the in best B movie. Oh, Louise Lazar, yeah, she's actor. great. Yes, she is. And that's a Woody Allen connection too. That's his like that's that was his true. first wife or something. Yeah. So yeah, this yeah. is effectively covering our honorable mentions, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Does anybody have an honorable mention that isn't? Uh... I mean, Cat's Eye. That, that was one I was going to pick, but I couldn't get a clue. Let's see. I'm looking at this list here. Where oh, would Cat's I... Eye. Yeah. We saw Cat's that. Eye. Phil loves that one, I think, or did back in high school. Oh, uh, you're thinking of Cat People. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Cat people. Yeah, he had he had a Nastasia Kinski obsession. Cat's eye is more uh, Stephen King. Yeah, it is, it is Stephen King. <laughs> you're, you're right. I'm confused. I might. I might. It's, uh, it's the one where they tell the, this guy's trying to quit smoking. That's why. I hate and uh, they they put his wife on one of those uh, hot floors. Oh yeah. Barefoot. Yeah. 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 Hot floor coming. And then also they take one of his fingers, I think. She dances like a piece of popcorn. Yeah. 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 And if yeah. you if you sign up with this company, they're serious. If you if you cheat, they're gonna take a finger. And then and they're that, gonna torture your family. Uh yeah, wow. and the and the book I think his daughter dies like during the process. I gotta say about the cast of Clue again. I did not read the book. Eileen so, Brennan, Tim Curry, Madeline Kahn, Leslie Ann Warren, Martin Mull, Christopher Lloyd, Michael McKean, Colleen Camp. Yep. Leslie Ann Warren looked really hot in that movie, I thought. She did. <laughs> she was you good on Mission Clue? Impossible, too. She was yeah. good following uh, Cinnamon on Mission yeah. Impossible. Yeah. What what movie was it that Jeremy almost picked? Oh, Cat's Eye. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we already did. <laughs> yeah. Robert Hayes, Alan King. I don't think I've ever watched Cat's Eyes. You should. It's, it's basically three. It's three short stories basically put into a movie together. Wasn't just yeah. one of the guys, nineteen eighty five. Yes, it was. I like Ooh. that movie played a lot on like the movie channel or whatever. Yeah, whatever. that was very watchable movie. That's know. a good. That's a good uh, honorable mention for sure. Carolyn, that's a funny one. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Where are we at here? Oh, Hard Rock Zombies. I've, I've seen that. That's on a couple of horror brackets I made up. Yeah. Uh, so is uh, Kiss of the Spider Woman. Oh, yeah. Kiss of the Spider I, Woman. I could have picked Mad Max. Kiss of the Spider Woman was a great movie, but that one was way too depressing for me. I mean, yeah, it's really a honor. that's why that's it probably why it ended up outside my top 20. No, I know Tim, didn't your professor or someone yeah yeah involved. yeah my uh my thesis the guy who approved my thesis in film school was the writer of kiss of the spider woman great performances from both of those actors though yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it was Julia well written and, good performances uh, william hurt. definitely william hurt raul julia what it, what it do you think of it like... almost just those two right mm-hmm. was, mm-hmm. no there were the flashback scenes or whatever with uh Sophia, whatever her name is. Yeah. Also, I see Desperately Seeking Susan on here too. That I Desperately feel like that would be a good Susan honorable mention for me. I love uh yeah. I love that one too. I enjoyed yeah. Witness. I'd never yeah. seen that one. Yeah. I'd I saw never that. seen Pale Rider. Love I'd never that. seen To Live and Die in LA. I, I saw a lot of movies I hadn't seen. I before. haven't seen that one. Oh, to live and die in LA is all oh, that's a good one that's there good with one. all of the fun with it. Yes. Yeah, well, I like that one. Bill, yeah, out of Africa. Mm-hmm. That was Same a that. critic's darling. I know that. Yeah, at the Pop time, there. just because at it had time. Robert Redford and Meryl Streep in it, though, I think yeah. it wasn't that good. Agnes of God, that was fun. That was a f- kind of wacky movie. I remember I was saying on our chat that uh, my biggest pet peeve was that. Um. She didn't look like a realistic smoker, Jane Fonda. Yeah. <laughs> no spot him, right? And smoking was key to the core of this character. Like right. she's a chain smoker throughout the whole thing, and she does not look comfortable holding a cigarette. You got to learn to be able to talk with the cigarette dangling I'm, on your. I'm not a. Tip. I'm not a cigarette smoker myself, but I know what somebody looks like <laughs> when they looks are. like actual smoker. 
Yeah. Yeah. I grew up with a smoker. I know what they look like. It's kind of like John Goodman swinging a baseball bat. Exactly. John Goodman <laughs> thinking he's Babe Ruth. Desperately seeking Susan. We've discussed or touched on a little bit. That was, um, that was interesting. That was, that was better than I expected it to be. Lady Hawk was good. Falcon and the Snowman. I expected better. I think. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, that should have been better. I couldn't get through it. Boring. (laughs) I got through it. It was a little dull. But um, I think Cecil and Ebert love it. I think a few years back we watched critics loved called uh, From Hell, and it was it was torture. Uh But we made ourselves watch the whole movie. We we basically we were watching it with some friends of ours. And we sort of dared ourselves to watch the movie it moving was, forward. It was and Ebert's and I kept three. saying, we can stop now. <laughs> it was Ebert's number three and it was Siskel's number eight. Yeah. I remember okay. it was on both their lists. Yeah, that's not our fault. But my favorite Sean Penn is still Sp- I, Spicoli. You know? I, f- I fell asleep during Mishima and didn't go back to it. So that, I guess it mm. loses out. Yeah. I, want, I wanted to watch that one. So I'll give I'll give that a shout out. Wow, where are we at here? It's a big America year. So we're on yeah. Okay. Falcon and Snowman, I think. Explorers thirty one. Remo Williams, the adventure begins. Yeah, how is that what on the anyone's fuck list? Was that, man? <laughs> it was no. But I still liked, liked it better than, than Silverado or Mad yeah. Max Beyond well, Thunderdome. I like Mad I Max. like Mad Max. Oh, of course, Mad that Max might have been my dad. I hate Mad Max. And the, the Goonies like the was first good. Two. I can still rewatch the Goonies if I catch a few minutes of it on TV oh, or something. It's the first time I'd ever watched the Goonies, and it was it was just bad. It's one of those movies you have to watch as a kid. Otherwise, it, yeah. you try to watch when you're adult, you're just gonna be like, "What the fuck is this garbage?" Speaking <laughs> you of which, okay. Reanimator I'll give behind. You that one. You put Reanimator behind King Solomon's Mines in a course line. You should be shot in the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Bill? I, those, know, those, the I could, movie, I could, the only I could roll I ever... dice and pick and just pick the highest one. Would go <laughs> those three or King three Solomon three Fox Fox is the only movie I ever walked out on and asked for my dollar back. Wow, <laughs> my dollar. <laughs> dollar I spent twenty minutes waiting for the manager to say, "Yeah, I want the dollar back." Yeah, I'm getting my dollar. <laughs> you still got my popcorn money, my soda money. I want that dollar back. Yeah. yeah. Chorus line, I want to point out that uh at the end before the big before the big performance or whatever, they cut a whole bunch of people. And then it's it's like the end of the movie, except they have one performance where everybody's in full costume and they do the they do this big main song, even the people that were cut. They're all in it. What the wow. fuck? I thought wow. you were cut 30 seconds ago. Well, I just hated that word jazz hot. I thought that was pretentious and they made it up and you know yeah. <laughs> why did you say jazz hot there's a song jazz hot it's like oh. what the fuck is that? jazz i don't hot. even remember it they made it up well, yeah. <laughs> it been, i'm yeah, not yeah, saying it wasn't in there i, it's a I was movie. letting it go in one ear and out the other yeah i couldn't let it go i guess michael douglas i feel like the people that were cut and then were in the chorus line at the end it was one of those like celebrate the movie type of things there mm. you know but they just didn't separate it like after the credits right they, they should have showed it before they cut the people yes yeah Maybe or that's... like i said it should have been one of those bloopers moments or but, something but why would you get the outfits for people that you're gonna cut you know exactly wearing <laughs> their they got got their gold lame top hats and tails and that's like when we went mm-hmm. out for the baseball team and they only had 12 uniforms and the 13th guy was <laughs> <laughs> Remember Did he get to was... play or or did he get to play or did he with just I'm without sorry. a uniform? I'm sorry I brought that up. Sorry Why? That. Did he get to play without a uniform? No. Oh. No, no, no. Okay. The guy was pass the manager was passive aggressive. He could not tell somebody they didn't make the team. We tried to drive out there and follow him out there. He tried to lose us in traffic on the way to the ballpark. <laughs> and when we showed up, he did. He realized it was a double header. He needed somebody to pitch, so he gave me a uniform since I was there. And I pitched, and I got bombed. Aaron- <laughs> Poor Aaron. Yeah. 
that's it. I think Aaron's I probably there. over the the loss. Guess, by the way, they took my uniform away after the game. Yeah. So it's no- <laughs> yeah. The, the coach Not is like wearing my to- uniform number that I'd requested, so I knew that I wasn't given on the team. Yeah, but Aaron, you know, to his credit, he tried to make this team as a catcher. He never caught me. <laughs> yeah, was uh, awesome. yeah, yeah, you got my respect for that. Were, were you were you hurt, Aaron? I'm sure I was. I don't remember yeah. specifically. <laughs> oh, then it's really not a big one. If you ha- if you don't remember the pain, then it was a brain injury. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of a deal. Yeah, King Solomon's mind's terrible. Yeah. terrible. Oh yeah, like yeah. I said, I literally walked out of the theater and asked for my dollar back. So what's that say about Reanimator? Does that mean I lost the dice roll? It, wow. it means it, it means it ain't for me. <laughs> and yeah, it lost the dice roll with chorus line and King Solomon's <laughs> mind. Because none of those three were for me. Yeah. All right. I don't who's I don't the winner it. of the field? I think I think yeah, it's um it yeah. might be recency so, bias too, because that's the last one of those turds that I watched. Mm. Yeah. All right. So. Drum roll, please. What what who is the winner? The most incredible movie. Of 1985, that was totally snubbed by the, the Academy. And the answer is, oh, yeah, mama. No, no, it's the Purple Rose of Cairo. Mine wins. Oh, wow. Back to the Future, a close second. Breakfast Club, third. Run and come and see right behind at four and five. Brewster's yeah. Millions at the bottom where it pretty much belongs. Yeah. Hey, it that's that, that, that's for, that's phrase picks. We all give him Sean Bassard for his picks. <laughs> or just, he, yeah. loves that, he loves that movie, huh? I don't know. Lo- I don't know what the fuck you're thinking. So wait, real quick, Aaron. How did maybe, this how did our list a Cubs fan? How did our list compare to Ebert and uh Siskel and oh, Ebert? Yeah, here we go. Can we see that? How did we do? Siskel. Siskel and Ebert both had show at one. They, yeah, well, S- Ebert said uh, Color Purple was number one. Show oh, was okay. above them all. The nine. Oh, wow. Three. Okay, he did that. So thing. I, I marked that one as zero. The zero three. thing, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they both liked Showa. Um, Siskel's got Showa, Ron, Color Purple, Fritzy's Honor, The Official Story. Whoa. Don't know that, that one. That one. Is that another Holocaust one or something? <laughs> I actually don't know that one either. Another I'll look movie. it up while you finish. Huh. Well, 85 would have been 40 years after the end of World War II. So mm-hmm. I wonder if that had something to do with the plethora okay. of Holocaust movies. The official it's, story. It's Argentinian. Argentinian. Okay. Oh, is it about uh, yes, the uh, probably. Nazis fleeing there. Well, I was going to say the uh, <laughs> what's the guy the the CIA coup right was was it Eliende or something? Hold on, I got there. it. You got it. Argentine historical it drama focuses film. on Alicia, a high school history teacher who's leading a comfortable life with her husband Roberto, a businessman with ties to the military and their adopted daughter. When Alicia begins to wonder about the identity of the little girl's birth parents, she finds herself suspecting that her daughter may be the child of people abducted or killed by the government's brutal crackdown on leftist groups. Right, right, okay. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good nap movie. It won the yeah. Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film. There you go. Yeah. All right. Um, well... Dictators. Okay. Finishing so, off. Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome. Um, Mishima, a, a Life in Four Chapters. That was a Japanese one that Paul I Schrader. Fell yeah. I fell asleep in chapter three, I think. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to get back to it. Falcon and the Snowman, Back to the Future, Purple Rose of Cairo. Going down from this one. Lost in America, Mad Max, Witness, Ron, Critzy's Honor. Falcon and the Snowman, After Hours, Color Purple, Show Up. All right, all right. And 
Rotten Tomatoes has at Reanimator at number five. Bill, you'll be happy to know. Hey. Rotten Tomatoes knows its stuff. Yeah, got, said no, said people, no one ever. Said no one ever. People speak. <laughs> the people speak. <laughs> the people speak on Rotten Tomatoes. I only, yeah, Tampo I only. Uh, one. Uh, Tampo. Po, I only. Uh, Ron, uh, Back to the Future. Audience. Brazil. Reanimator. Breakfast Club. After Hours. Pee Wee. Mad Max. Breakfast Club. Goonies. That's so that's wow. that's. Great. On audience, high, high for Goonies, but makes right? sense. The Rotten That's Tomatoes is based on audience score. I'm not, sh- I, I'm not no, sure the, if the, that was audience or critic. That might have been the critic score. That was a tomato meter, I'm guessing. It was a tomato meter. Yeah, sure. that tomato critics, meter right? is is critics. You know, I yeah, yeah. Philip Philip always looks at the uh, the critics, and I always on the Rotten Tomato, and I always look at the audience scores. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Yeah, most of the same our- titles are in Metacritic, except to live and die in LA jumps in there at number eleven. All right. Holy cow! That's interesting. That that's so high. Yeah. Uh-huh, the Goonies, yeah. Mad Max. Uh huh. Well, ship ship back to the to the um to ours, you know, to the uh, panel here, and as we close out the show, that way that'll be yeah. Or so, yeah, we, I guess we should read it out loud because uh, <laughs> it's an audio medium. Yeah. 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 Number one, the Purple Rose of Cairo, 81 points. Number Congratulations two. to Woody Allen. Yeah. There you go, Woody. <laughs> That's, me a kicking him out. That's me a handing him the cookware and kicking him right, out. Right. Kicking him out. <laughs> you slept with our daughter. That, Goodbye. Yeah. Right. He and he's uh, asked never to return. That request came Polanski, from his wife. Uh, in the hillside somewhere. Yeah, they're hiding out in France. Mm-hmm. Back to the Future, number two, 77 points. The Breakfast Club, number three, 62 points. Big drop. Ron, number four, 61 points. Come and see, number five, 60 points. Silverado, 57 points, number six. Clue, number seven, 53 points. Fletch and Reanimator tied for numbers eight and nine at 48 points. Pee Wee's Big Adventure and Spies Like Us tied for 10 and 11 at 44 points. Brazil and Explorers tied for 12 and 13 at 40 (laughs) points. And the undisputed loser of the bunch. Undisputed. Brewster's Millions with 20 (laughs) points. (laughs) Wow. That's the Bresnan of the of the podcast. Yeah, we can all agree on Brewster's Millions. It seems. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, we, got that, fun. That, we got one, two, travesty. three. Last place. This is two second, or one second to last place. A third to last place. I feel like Brazil got short uh, shifted here, but uh, yeah, people. Didn't I'd, I'd agree with that too. Yeah, but it's not streaming anywhere, so they can blame themselves for that shit. There you go. Right. Yep. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, we, it looks like we got they, there. They could put it on one of those and, paper, you know, where you have to watch the commercials. Yeah, put it, on tu- put, it on tu- put it on Tubi. Put it on Freebie. Put yeah. it on Pluto. Like, Again, yeah. shout out to the Thousand Oaks Library. Thank you for uh, hooking me up with uh, <laughs> all these 80s that, movies. Now, was that dubbed or was that... Uh, We're uh, not going to divulge our sources. It was, no, it was in English like it's supposed to be, <laughs> like it was shot. <laughs> So it looks like we got there in under two hours. I don't know what you guys were expecting, but uh, that's yeah, seems pretty about good. Par for the course. We did it. I was, I was yeah. expecting. I was expecting two hours. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Great, what, great work, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank our guest, yeah, Chancey Grife. So Anybody Jeremy have Price. anything to plug before we go? Chancey. Tim Mattel, well, Bill. Chancey, Ch- Chancey's muted, so I don't know where he is right now, but. Uh-oh. I don't He's been the, accidentally no, there he is. Well, on driving mode. Yeah, I'm, I'm on safe driving mode for whatever reason. I think it's because I hit a wrong button when I was logging in. Mm. But, uh, you know, you can find me on the most uneventful scavenger hunt on Facebook. Chansey is my first name, obviously. And if you can find me, good luck. Uh, on Instagram and TikTok, it's the Red Eye Roundtable. On X, it's Red Eye Table. And naturally, of course, you can find me along with uh, Jeremy on uh, Maniacal Music Musings. On YouTube and the Uncensored, Untamed, and Unapologetic Facebook group. And uh, let's see what you got there, Jeremy. I got all of it out of there for our end. Let's see what you got. 
Yeah, you got all of it out far end. Good job, Chancy. You get a cookie. But I did it one time. Yeah, I did it one good. time. I have a one, one cookie. Take. I'm teaching him. I have a pop finally. cookie if you want it. Uh, he will okay, want that. Well, two thirds of one. But uh, yeah, you could find you me. That yet? You could find me wherever he said. I hate fucking opposite directions here. Whatever he said. I don't know. He's somewhere back there in the void. But you could also find me on Paranormal New Normal or on Bracket Bastards and on Facebook as the group Chancy previously mentioned. You can find me on XX Baby and the Gram as that Juggle the Bastard. You can find me on Tiki Taki as that Juggle the Bastard podcast. And you can find us both on YouTube as Maniacal Music Musings. Or you can find me on Paranormal New Normal. Or you can catch us streaming live on any show on Blind Knowledge Network. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. So you're everywhere. Literally I'm in here. B225 trying to uh, make sure that we don't drop out of the top 20 in the world in education. There you go. <laughs> it's bound to happen. And we a are. baseball diamond near you shouting at people to uh, <laughs> to back up, back up the third baseman. And choke up on the bat. Exactly. Don't be afraid of the ball. Yes. Let the ball travel. <laughs> There's a lesson I never learned. Get that launch angle. Yeah. My baseball slash softball career did not last. Someday we'll tell you about their home run. She did hit a home run once. Yes. Yep. Tim? Into a swimming pool. This is this has been this week in Shohei Otani. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me at uh, manbabymovie.com. Watch my movie, Man Baby, streaming on TV, rentable yeah. from Amazon. Uh, Watch check Man out everybody Baby. who's listening. Yep. It's a laugh, right? It's good. Yeah, it did thanks, make me laugh. Again. Out loud. L O L. Appreciate the support. I appreciate it. Appreciate being on. This is this has been right. fun. Yeah. 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 All right. So I guess mm -hmm. we'll see everybody for movies of nineteen eighty six. I guess it's officially a thing now that we've done three. <laughs> I yes. I am I am looking forward to it because there are a lot of good movies in eighty six, actually. Yes, there was. Where social. Twitter. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. Instagram. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. Facebook. Yeah, uh-huh, pod. So let us know. Hit us back. Have a great week. Yeah.